Hi, my name is Mark Renz. I'm with the University of Wisconsin Extension, and I'm here to talk to you today on how to identify canna thistle, a common invasive plant found in a wide range of areas in Wisconsin. Uh, this plant is a creeping perennial. It's a herbaceous plant, and so often we see it in large patches that kind of spread clonally um, as this plant progresses in its dominance. We tend to see it in a wide range of areas, although as we see here, it's in a ditch near a roadside. It tends to do better in wetter areas, although it can tolerate some drier conditions as well. Uh, it's important to differentiate this plant from many of our biennial thistles as its management is quite different. So again, the creeping perennial roots is one key way to identify it. Another thing to look at are the leaves are quite distinct as we see here. These leaves tend to not be hairy at all on the upper side of the leaf. Sometimes on older leaves, on the lower side, you'll see some light hairiness, but it tends on the younger leaves not to be hairy at all. The lobes, as we see, can be quite irregular from leaf to leaf. Uh, they do tend to have these spines jutting out at the tips, but the leaf shape and structure is quite irregular from plant to plant. A key characteristic that we can look at is the stem, and actually you'll notice is there are no spines on the stems as we have it here. The spines all come out from the edges of the leaves that we see, a key characteristic in comparing it to the other biennial thistles. And then looking at the flowers as we see here, this plant has dioecious plants, which means it has male and female flowers. They're very small, about the size of the tip of your pinky, and do not have any spines uh, that are prickly on it present at all, about a half inch long, very small compared to our other thistles. Later on, what we see with these as they mature is they produce these small, light, fluffy seed that we see present here in which they can blow off and disperse, although much of the seed tends to typically just drop right where the parent plant is. So again, in conclusion, we have several key characteristics to identify this plant. It's clonal, so it tends to spread in large patches. We have uh, leaves that tend not to have hairs on them until they get older and the hairs on the underside of the leaf only. Irregular lobing and those small flowers that do not have spines on it. Those should all lead to success in identifying this plant correctly.